He looked so cool. He had a uh, a button up AMC shirt that was like a little distressed. Yeah, it was and like a vintage. It was AMC. like a vintage AMC button up. Brunch, hit it, boys. <laughs> Double feature today, and we saw uh, Dreamin' Wild, sad Casey Affleck music movie. Love that. Up my alley. Even if you're not a big like brunch movie review-ish person, I'd say still probably listen to that just because it's a kind of brunchy movie. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Very divisive film. Uh, did you see the trailer, though, for Gran Turismo? I did, yeah. I saw that a little, a little while back. Oh, all in. Really? Yeah. I, that's And I don't know anything about any of that stuff, but I was just like, Orlando Bloom, David Harbour, who kind of looks like Big Cat now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he does. And and like, I think that the the second time that I watched it, which was before uh, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, like, I was more welcoming to it. The first time I watched it, though, it seemed very corny and very cheesy. And like, it, it felt too video gamey to mm-hmm. me. Um, but I guess it's based off a true story, which is kind of crazy. You know what my favorite part of it is, though? You know who plays the main kid? No. Simon from Midsommar. Really? The one of the, the couple that's yeah, there, yeah. him and the girl, they don't, may contain spoilers, they don't have the best time. <laughs> at uh, Who old... does, though? Uh, Pele? Does he die or does he? No, his brother does. Uh, Pele doesn't make it, does he? Because, like, he he orchestrated the whole thing. There's no way that he gets out of there. I think he does. Really? I th- Man, I gotta go back and watch that movie. I bet that there's, like, fanfic about he and Danny riding off into the sunset. Mm, I don't know about that. I, I Fun fact about me, I've not gone back and watched that movie at all. You've only seen it once? One time. Oh, I've seen that movie a hundred times. I know, because there was like a three-month span where we re- reviewed it like every two weeks. The best. <laughs> I remember one time I was going to see it in theaters. It was probably like the third time, maybe. That's cool. And He's the reason that, that movie three times so in theaters. One was, so I remember the first time I saw Midsommar, I had to do it in two uh, different segments because of timing stuff and that was a very weird thing mm-hmm. so i like oh yeah saw the first half at one point and then i saw the second half at another point and then when i was going for the third time the guy was like guy taking the tickets was like watch out man this is a rough one i was like oh i've already seen it he was like you have you came back he for was seconds? like and you came back and i was like yeah and he was like damn how many people how many times you got to see those old people die <laughs> Uh, I think the, the third time was it the second or third time that was also the uh, the extended cut. Remember they re released the extended cut, and oh, then I forgot all about that. Yeah, and then you went back. I don't know if I saw that one in theaters or if I just I think I owned that one. Yeah. No, you, no, you went back in theaters because we talked about it with Randy Havens. Yeah, I can't remember though if I bought that or what. Yeah, I remember like Randy was a big, big, big. Oh yeah, uh, Midsummer head, and we would like text about stuff that wasn't in the theatrical cut but like oh man when you find out that this happens that makes this thing make a lot more sense and oh i bet that ari aster must have been so mad they cut this part out man those were the day. midsommar was a moment in time <laughs> it really was and it is uh i should go back and watch it because I, there's a lot of stuff that i probably forgot what i did watch this week by the way for the first time was uh jury duty no but i did watch that last week we discussed nice. it um i watched interstellar oh have you have you seen interstellar i have not seen interstellar which man i i avoided it for some reason you know you know sometimes when you like when there's a big movie going around and like you maybe hear something and it you're like oh i guess maybe i don't need to see that and or like you just like come up with some preconceived notion about what the movie is and you've just decided in your head that like yeah this movie's about this and i don't need to see it interstellar was not at all what i thought it was really and the part that I thought was the ending that was like going around on on Twitter, and I was like, oh, okay, I kind of like already know the ending of this movie. I don't need to see it. That movie, that that part was like halfway through, and that movie might be my favorite Christopher Nolan movie. Real, so it's it, so fucking good. I know it's like this beloved Christopher Nolan movie. I am n- noticing though 
whenever somebody says that something is their favorite Christopher Nolan movie, it's presented, and I'm, you didn't do this, but it's presented with like, now I know this is going to sound like a hot take, but I'm like, everybody loves Christopher Nolan. Right, like every and Christopher they Nolan love, movie. Like all of his movies <laughs> did really well. So someone's like, uh, it's like doing the same thing with Tarantino, where it's like Django like Unchained. Brown. Yeah. yeah, like that's one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good, right. Good like, choice. That motherfucker hasn't missed. So yeah. no matter what when you it pick, comes to ice cream, I'm like a strawberry guy. Don't hold it against I've, me. I've heard. I've. I think my favorite ice cream, or used to be strawberry fl- uh, favorite ice cream, and people used to like act like that was a psychotic thing. Strawberry ice cream rules. Strawberry ice cream is the best. I've since pivoted to cookies and cream or mint chocolate chip being uh, my favorite. But like, if you like strawberry ice cream and that's your favorite, absolutely don't take any shit from anybody. Of those three, guess how I'm ranking them? Strawberry. Oh, no. Mint chocolate chip, sh- strawberry, cookies and cream. Which order was that? Was that Like top to bottom. Oh, no. Mint chocolate chip last. Oh, really? Just because I don't really do it. I don't do anything minty, really. I do, but... Oh, boy. Cookies and cream and strawberry? That's a real toss-up. You know what's a crazy thing? I currently... I can't keep snacks or anything good uh, in my home because I just uh, crush it. (laughs) I have currently, for at least a week... I've had the makings of root beer floats just <laughs> hanging around untouched because I made root beer floats back to back nights. Oh my god! <laughs> and I'm like, I can't have another That's root beer sick, float though. for I like ten it. years. I, I I would like never think to do that. It was but now I was that, with my but, friends. It but was now that it's been planted in my brain, dude, do it. Get some bottles of root beer and some ice cream. I was texting with my friends. And I was like, this is going to be the most 40-year-old virgin thing I've ever done. <laughs> but I am going to run out and get the accoutrement for... It does. like you Because have... that legitimately happens in that movie. What? Oh, in 40-year-old 40, virgin? He makes, uh, they ask what everybody did over the weekend. And he says that he made egg salad. And his story is just like, I went out, got the stuff, like made it. By the time it was done, didn't really want it as much. <laughs> Did you still want the root beer float when you were finished with it? I can't imagine not oh, wanting that. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I it was imagine. amazing. And I in fact I sent out a call on Twitter. Uh the the root beer wasn't cold enough yet, and I wanted the root beer float now. And somebody suggested a uh wet paper towel. Have you ever, you ever no, heard of this? No. I had no idea how they were fucking with me. Wet paper towel, wrap it around something, put it in the freezer, ten minutes, ice cold. Really? I like I quote tweeted it being like, "Is this going to start a fire?" And <laughs> you've seen that, right? The the the, uh, the, the tinfoil ball. Oh no! <laughs> it's like people... it's like a meme on online where it's like a or I guess just like a famous tweet. It was somebody who who uh, like had like a perfect sphere, like you know, like basically one of those uh, like whiskey balls. Yeah, it like took a. It was like a before picture, and it was a tinfoil ball, and then the after picture was the perfect sphere, and it was like, yo, I didn't know if you put it in the microwave, it does this, and somebody replied, and it was just a picture of their microwave on fire. Jesus. It was like, you son of a bitch. You remember, I mean, this was, this. I think this was during brunch's early days, the iPhone thing. Do you remember that you can charge the your iPhone in the microwave? <laughs> I don't remember that. It's but. like this new iPhone came out. I'm gonna look this up. Uh, <laughs> iPhone micro micro. I mean, I believe that it happened for sure. Uh, I don't remember it though. This was in 2014. Okay, so this is well before brunch, but um, no, I don't think so. You'd be surprised. We probably brunch started. was like 2016. Okay, iPhone users fall for <laughs> a prank. Putting your iPhone in the microwave will cook it, not charge it. Apple urges users to not fall for... Yeah, I remember Apple had to put out a thing being like... (laughs) That's incredible. Gotta keep them out of the microwave, guys. Somebody put out there that if you microwave your phone, it charges. And this was the new feature of this brand new phone that all these people got. And they fucking stuck them in the microwave and broke them. That's Uh, so mean, but also like... Listen, if you put your phone in the microwave and and try to charge it you deserve whatever comes to you uh fake advertisements claiming iphones can be charged by putting them in the microwave have caught out 
This, this is, I think, a British thing. I don't know what caught out means. Have caught out yeah, unwary... Yeah, it's a Daily Mail. Yeah. Have caught out unwary users whose phones have been set on fire or left a smoking ruin when they've tried it. Apple has been frantically trying to hose down the ad by internet pranksters 4chan, tweeting warnings that this is a hoax and asking followers to urgently retweet the message. Heard of hashtag Apple Wave? It's a hoax and will destroy your iPhone, said a tweet from the support account. Please spread the word. That's that awesome. That rocks. That's awesome. People just got all... I mean, it sucks for like anyone who's like a real phone head and maybe spent outside their means to get this phone. Yeah. But God, if that is an also Wave, kind of... Apple Wave, though, is kind of a sick, a what? sick name. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. App, hashtag Apple, Apple Wave. Wave. Man, that's great. I got to tell you, uh, in this week in uh, Haley Williams' Instagram videos, by the way, Pete's I was sucked into the black hole. now on Instagram. Uh, I saw that uh, Steph Curry joined see Paramore that. on stage for Misery Business. So I am as in the Paramore loop as could possibly be for a not big I'm also Paramore very fan. in on Steph Curry. Just seems like the best guy. I think he's awesome at basketball. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's for sure. My take on the, no, but pretty uh, good at golf too. Uh getting back to the uh the Christopher Nolan thing. Aaron Rodgers said with Peter Schrager that his favorite Christopher Nolan movie is The Prestige. Mm -hmm. And heard that today from my buddy when I was talking to him about Interstellar. And that is a an extremely common favorite Christopher yeah, Nolan. Yeah, he movie. he didn't he didn't pose it as like here's uh, my but Peter controversial... Schrager was like the magician one? Whoa. Hot take. And I was like that's like everybody's favorite Christopher Nolan movie. I don't know about that, but like I think it's it's a, very, a, it's it's a, a popular pick. It, right, it's a very popular pick. Uh having not seen all of them Right now, my favorite is Oppenheimer. I like it more than I like any of those uh, Batman movies. I mean, I, I, before yesterday, I would have said that Oppenheimer was my favorite. But, man, Interstellar is very much up my alley. <laughs> oh, no. More pictures of iPhones on fire. That <laughs> That's is... a literal, literally. How did they take that picture of their iPhone literally on fire? Like, you don't put out the fire first? Yeah, right. Oh, or saying, you get like, another phone? Yeah. That, <coughs> that is just... Um, a mess. Yeah, I uh, remember when we were talking about like a couple weeks ago how uh, I was on my Denny Villeneuve wave yeah. watch through, and I was like, "Yeah, Arrival Denny wasn't Villeneuve wave." Yeah, that's right. Uh, Arrival wasn't my favorite Denny movie by any means, but like the premise was very cool, and I thought about it for quite some time after the fact. Man, if I had seen Interstellar, I would have hated Arrival because I did it not is like Arrival because it's essentially the same. It's not the same premise, but it, it has a lot of the, the same parallels with uh, time and space travel and like interdimensional um, sort of elements like in time relativity. So like if, if I had seen Interstellar before watching Arrival, I, I would have had like not many great things to say about Arrival. <laughs> yeah, Ar Arrival in the moment I didn't love. I was kind of confused by all of the... Uh... Their I, aliens I think were so was, lame. I think it was like a, a kind of like a reputation nominee. Mm, I I mean I guess they I, were I, like this this was this this was made with, I with thought, good hands. Yeah, like some of it was really cool, but also once the alien showed up, I was kind of out because their aliens were fucking lame as hell. Mm. They did like the big like black smoky thing behind the glass or whatever it was. That shit was weird. You know when this T-shirt's from? Uh, 2023. This is like a... This T-shirt is at least 20 years old. Is it really? Found it at my parents. Oh, hell yeah. I was... I don't know why it fits me. I was a way smaller person when I would have been wearing this T-shirt, but... Yeah, but you probably times. just got like the biggest baggy T-shirt. Baggy style. Yeah, pretty good. It's a good T-shirt. It is a good T-shirt. Uh, it's an ACDC T-shirt for anybody who's not watching on Spotify or, or YouTube. You should start doing that, though, because video episodes rock. Yeah. Um, have you ever seen, speaking of the Steph Curry thing, have you ever seen an athlete go on stage with a band? Probably. Like, been at a show and yes. brought out? I actually uh, I saw Dispatch at the, uh, the TD Bank North Garden mm. right after the Bruins won the Stanley Cup. Whoa. And they celebrated with the Stanley Cup on stage as Dispatch played that show. Nice. It was very cool. Was there a player there? I think anything? so. I think it was Sean Thornton. 
That sounds about right. Mm-hmm. I saw uh, 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 Paul McCartney brought out Gronk, and okay. I was like, get him off the stage. What do you think they were doing in the green room? And then they played, <laughs> like, McCartney played Helter Skelter, and, like, Gronk sang it. And I love Rob Gronkowski, and, like, loved the Super Bowls. I famously was the first person to say he was going to be good in the NFL, but I was, like, very close to booing. Yeah, like, well, get I mean, him off the stage. Well, yeah, when you go to see like a beloved musician yeah. and you want to hear them play a song, and then instead you hear Rob Gronkowski sing it, I think I'd be pretty annoyed. I wonder if Paramore fans are like, "Yo, that's our fucking queen up there." Don't give another person the mic, even if it is Steph Curry. Yeah, I wonder if though, like, I didn't see the full clip. I wonder if like she was kind of just like she took it back, you know? Mm. Maybe he just maybe he just put a shot up. Yeah, and, and it wasn't like a full like replacement for misery business or whatever they he's saying. Uh, we went to see Dream and Wild, which is the uh, biopic of uh, Donnie and Joe Emerson, a couple of brothers in the seventies who uh, made a record. No one cared about it. They were teenagers. Bunch of time passed, and then in the two thousands. Boom, some record collector finds it, and suddenly they got all this attention. People wanted to perform. It's a big thing, and it's a sad movie. It's got Casey Affleck in it. We're going to review that in just a second. We went to see it together. Rare thing. We don't go to the movies together. Uh, Hit MacGuffins before. Just wanted to point out, we never talked about this guy. The bartender was big actor bartending for a role. Kind yes. of guy. Like oh, it seemed yes. like he was doing research for a role. Yes. Not uh, to say that anybody's too good for anything or that he wasn't a good bartender or whatever. He just had the vibes of like, if you were to tell me that guy's a character actor and he was gonna play a MacGuffins worker, <laughs> he was working on it. I I hundred percent agree. And my big takeaway was like Nobody that works at AMC or MacGuffins should look this cool. He looked great. He looked so cool. He had a a, a button up AMC shirt that was like a little distressed. Yeah, it was and like a vintage. It was AMC. like a vintage AMC button up, and it was open with a white T shirt underneath. He had cool tattoos. A lot of tattoos. He had, I think, like bracelets and very uh, clean hair. He, he had a clean hair and a well manicured beard, but he had this rough look to him. Like he looked like he could be like a biker. And he looked like he didn't give a shit about or he acted like he didn't give a shit about bartending. Yeah. Which was very cool. He was it completed the whole look. He was like a way cooler Jason Schwartzman. Ah, uh, that's not the comparison I would make. I don't know who I would. I mean, uh, the, uh, why can't I think of his? He name? was like way rougher than Jason Schwartzman. Yeah, Schwartzman. but he could have been. Pl- he could have been played by Jason Schwartzman or who's the guy? I can never think of his name. The guy that plays uh, Ziggy in The Wire. Yeah, I forget his name. Uh, Josh. I could definitely see that guy playing him. It's uh, James Ransone. Yes. Bang. Yeah, yeah. What a but like guy. he James Ransone would have to like either like starve himself or, or hang Volcom, out at one of the two or like live on the street for like a week and then play that guy. Cause this guy just had like a little bit more ruggedness to him than James Ransone. Well, here's the dream and wild review. Dream and Wild from director Bill Polad is a musical biopic telling the story of Donnie and Joe Emerson, a pair of brothers who see a record they made as teens in the 1970s suddenly develop a following in the 21st century, long after they had left their musical duo behind. Casey Affleck and Walton Goggins star as the Emerson brothers and are flanked by a supporting cast of Noah Jupe, Zoe Deschanel, Chris Messina, Bo Bridges, and Jack Dylan Grazer. As of this recording, it has an 87% on Rotten Tomatoes. Dream and Wild's runtime is one hour and 50 minutes. I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the audience score of this movie, which pissed me off. 65% wow. audience score. Audiences don't really like this movie. Wow, interesting. I mean, so I the first thing I want to say is that we went to see this movie because it was recommended. It was given a hard recommend by a friend of the podcast who knows our taste very well, said this is probably a brunch movie. Boy, was he right. Extremely uh, brunch movie. Extremely brunch movie. Uh, this is a music person, so I knew that you were going to love the movie a little bit more than I was. And I would say that it fell short of the hype that was given to me. Like, I was told that it was an awesome movie with great music. And I would say that both of those things kind of fell short a little bit. It's not an awesome movie. No, it's not. But I love it. It reminds me of Air 
in that this is like a sad air where <laughs> air was all positivity and you knew what you were going to get going into it and it didn't surprise you in a ton of ways this didn't surprise me in a ton of ways it's Casey Affleck playing uh Danny Emerson or Donnie Emerson I'm sorry being the tortured artist never really made it and he's got this tough relationship with both music and his family because so much of it was intertwined and I'll tell neither... you what though uh, uh, Casey Affleck playing a tortured anything always does it for me that's the thing it was like it, it was kind of Casey Affleck porn mm -hmm. in a way which isn't a bad thing because he's excellent and nobody gives a crying monologue like he does he definitely has a, at least one of those he's got a a meltdown he's got a crying monologue he's perfect for this sort of thing although i did look up the emerson brothers and watched a couple of clips of them mm -hmm. massive liberties were taken by casting casey affleck as donnie emerson donnie emerson way more of a ham way more outgoing and there's a scene where they replicate a live performance that they did and it was the only point in the movie where i thought this doesn't really make sense for the character and it was because Casey Affleck was saying exactly what Donnie Emerson said during this. You know what I'm talking about? Where they're giving a performance. Oh, and he's yeah. he's saying, yeah. like, can't you feel the beach out there? And he's kind of making these weird choices that somebody as cagey as his character probably wouldn't make. But then you see at the spoilers, kind of, at the end of the movie, they show some live footage of the two brothers performing. And you're like, oh, it makes sense for this guy who's clearly more outgoing make I these kinds of choices i was told by a per the person that recommended the movie who met uh uh donnie emerson quite basically the exact description you just really gave. very different very outgoing can can talk to like a wall uh just a, a very outgoing and uh, talkable person casey affleck's donnie emerson not much for talking no <laughs> not definitely as not. much in the mood for talking or doing things and but but i mean it's it's a very likable, sad movie. The music thing is interesting because they do have a kind of musical cast by incorporating Zoe Deschanel mm -hmm. as Donnie Emerson's wife, and she's great in it. I thought that uh, Noah Jupe, who played the young Donnie Emerson, was awesome. I thought, what's his name? Jack Dylan uh, Grazer, who played young Joe Emerson, was great. I thought that both the young versions of the Emersons were awesome. And it's a family story. It's a music story. I feel like you end up falling in love with Joe Emerson, both young and old. Walton Goggins is fantastic in this. Both looks I mean, fantastic from the from beginning to end. Like this is a very well acted movie. Yeah, yeah. Casey Affleck kind of does what Casey Affleck is going to do with that sort of role. Which I think, if you like movies and if you've watched Casey Affleck movies, you'll know what you're expecting. But you're still going to be really satisfied. We recently saw Oppenheimer as did everybody. And the only bad note I had on the movie was like Casey Affleck's in it for one scene and he's not very good in it. And I'm not used to seeing Casey Affleck not good. They didn't ask a lot of him in Oppenheimer. Still, it seemed like he was. It was like bad. Just he was just, the, yeah, no, like he was. I no, he was, like bad he was just scene. Casey Affleck. Go, you, go watch that scene. It was mm. like he had, he was getting the lines in an earpiece, and he was trying to get everybody around him to be quiet so he could get get them out. It was like a rare time where you're like Casey Affleck, who I think is like truly one of the great actors of our time. Correct was like, Ugh. and then you watch this, and you're like. There's my crybaby. <laughs> I yeah, like all the performances were great. Most of my issues were with um, like the writing and sort of like the pace. It, it has a slow first act, and it takes a little to, little while to get off the ground. Some of the dialogue is a little corny. I, I, I would say that this is a like a really strong Sunday hangover watch, but not much more than that. That's in my what book. air is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um. I'm interested in this director, Bill Polat, I believe is how you pronounce the last name. He's uh, the son of the former Minnesota Twins owner, and he directed one movie in the 90s, and then has just been an executive producer for a bajillion movies. Then in 20, what would it have been? Uh, 2014, he directed Love and Mercy, which was the Brian Wilson biopic, and then... He directs this in 2023. And I thought Love and Mercy was really good. Yeah, like Love and Mercy is a good biopic, obviously great subject matter. And I'm like, yeah, good. And this is the next thing he directs. And I saw an interview with him 
where he insisted he's not just like trying to be the musical biopic guy. But I mean, if that's all he's doing, he's doing a good job of it. He's wants to direct a bunch of different things but he also is a tortured musician himself so i don't know i find it very interesting that he keeps ending up doing these films about tortured souls who happen to play music there is in this movie a comparison to brian wilson and i did not know the music of the emerson brothers i enjoyed it during the movie listened to it after jesus whoever made that comparison (laughs) not even close uh this movie is awfully mean to Joe Emerson throughout. One of the things is that Donnie is the good musician. Joe is the older brother and is very supportive of Donnie and wants to help him in any way he can. So he's in this band with him, uh, but he's just not a very good drummer. And both in their adolescence and in adulthood, Donnie struggles with like, how do I kind of work with this guy? He's, he's holding me back. He's holding me back. And then after you listen to the music and you're like, wow, the movie could have been a lot meaner to Joe. <laughs> like he was just a, like he was a very bad drummer. It's just like all very out of time. But that kind of gives it a charm, given that they were teenagers when they made this movie. I just did feel bad that every time they took a shot at Joe during the movie, I was like, Jesus, we get it. He's not that. He can't be that bad. And well, then mean, you listen to the music, and you're like, mm, he's very bad. Yeah, and you could understand like that's like the crux of the story. <laughs> like it's two brothers. One of them is good, and the other one is not good. And like they want to do stuff together, but Donnie Emerson can't because his brother stinks. And as somebody who is not musically talented whatsoever and can't keep time myself. Listening to uh, "Baby" mm. by uh, by Dream and Wild or mm. Dream and Wild the album, yeah, uh, very distracting on the drums. Very, very distracting. Yeah, like you can hear how out of time it is, and I'm pretty sure at points it must have been Don. Somebody like just stuck a metronome into onto the track, so there was like some click that was keeping it in time. Un- unless like they had Don uh, Joe on such a loud click track to try to lock him in. And it still didn't really do the trick, but it did bleed into the mics. Who knows? It could have been anything. Uh, But I like this movie. I obviously, uh, as a depressed fellow, I'm going to love the character of uh, of Donnie. And I was saying to you after, there's so many things about that character that to people who aren't depressed think like, this character doesn't make any sense. He contradicts himself because his overall vibe is like, look. I'm trying to do stuff. Now leave me alone. I'm a failure. And it's like, well, what is it? Are you doing stuff? Are you a failure or whatever? And like, he's got all these conflicting things weighing down on him. And that I think ends up being so much more Casey Affleck than it might necessarily be the real life Donnie Emerson. But I'd rather it this way. If you're making a movie, give me the Casey Affleck crybaby. Yeah. I mean, so it, 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 the, the character, doesn't quite have like the charm that I wanted him to Um, definitely like a tortured soul, but he is all over the place. Maybe that's intentional. Maybe it's not, but I don't know this, this movie kind of lacks a bit of charm in my book. Maybe I'm comparing it too much to like Juliet naked, which Mm. sort of has a similar plot where it's like a guy who was big back in the day, uh, you know, kind of gets pulled into um, like a comeback and that movie just had so much fucking charm to it. And he was like such a likable character. And I don't know, like this was this one didn't really do anything super well. I, I thought that Bo Bridges was very good. Mm-hmm. I uh, there's a very good scene between Casey Affleck and in Bo Bridges. But I think that's the strongest part of the movie is like the familial aspect to it, like uh, how strong the family ties are and like what. Uh, what Donnie's dad will do, will do and has done for him and sort of like just, you know, supporting the people that you love and care about. Got to cr- uh, got to shout out Chris Messina. He is a um, he's a stool bar candidate on brunch. We, of course, uh, give out the stool bar every year. Somebody who is good in multiple movies as Michael Stuhlbarg was in Call Me By Your Name, The Shape of Water, The Post, etc. That one year, the reigning winner, of course, is Hong Chow the last year for The Menu and The Whale. But Messina now has done movies with both Afflecks. And That's true. If there's any way to get up high on my list, it's in doing In one that. year. That's in the saying. same year, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So shout out Chris Messina. He always does the Christmas scene of things, so he's solid. Uh, what are some positives from this movie? Uh, like it's it's 
it's fine. Like it, it's, uh, it's, not it's a good positive. <laughs> I know. I mean, like I didn't dislike it, but I, 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 again, like I don't think anything really like struck me across the board. I think that it's, uh, again, like one of the biggest strengths for me is like the family dynamic and the family sort of tale that's that's told here. I think that's really enjoyable. Casey Affleck in a Casey Affleck role. The brothers, both young and old, uh, very well played. Uh, negatives. Um, the the first act is really slow. Uh, takes a little while to get anywhere. Uh, and I thought the dialogue was a bit corny at times. Hmm. I will lastly note, uh, this is a movie, as I said, it's kind of like Air, uh, just for the other side of it, for sadness. Not Telling Tales Out of School, you did piss during this movie. I did. And uh, both of us actually pissed, and we felt fine and confident. We saw it on opening night, so there was no uh, run pee times or whatever. You're not going to miss a crucial part of the story as you're watching it because you can guess how it goes. Yeah, pretty much. You can fill in the gaps for sure. So I guess a predictable, like that, that could be a, a negative. Uh, what are you giving it? A three out of five. Oh, a very wow. inoffensive. Wow, I'm giving it a four out of five. Okay. All right, that is uh, Dream and Wild. I went out for breakfast two days in a row this weekend, mm -hmm. and I am now fully in on oatmeal. Ew. I. I and why ooh, you don't like oatmeal anyway? I don't like the texture. I've also so I've always been an oatmeal guy, but I don't have it every day. I think now, probably for the rest of my life, I'm going to have oatmeal with fruit in it. It's, it's good with good for you, isn't it? It's I think it's good. I don't know. It's carbs, but it, like it makes like, you feel full and uh, relative to like other breakfast options, it, it's probably very good for you. I, I I personally think of it as a cereal replacement and it's a million times better for you than cereal yeah but oh my god next time you're out at breakfast you, you ordered oatmeal at breakfast, at breakfast uh, but i got it with other stuff like just like fruit and stuff i got fruit? bacon and eggs and then i said why don't you toss me a bowl of uh what, what are you guys doing for oatmeal and first place i went put some fruit in it it was nice second place i went also put fruit in it but clearly this oatmeal was some like diabetes oatmeal. It was the best. Oh, okay. They made it like <laughs> the, you, it was so buttery, but then but then there's like you got pineapple in there. I bet oh I would God. like good or like I guess bad oatmeal, like oatmeal that like is terrible for you. I would probably I could probably get it down, but anytime that I've tried oatmeal in the past, like I literally just can't even swallow it. It's dis it also looks disgusting just because it's so mushy. Yeah. A thing that I've learned over the years, if you do microwave bowl oatmeal, Cool it on the time. Don't microwave it for that long. I don't know. Like, people, I think, put it in there, and they get it to the point where it's almost a slime. I'm maxing out at 40 seconds in the microwave. Okay. Just get that shit a little wet. Warm it up a little. You want to leave some crunch to those oats. It's a fucking great time. Guess what I'm doing this weekend? Uh, going to breakfast. Probably, yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah. But... I'm going in Portland, which means that I'm definitely going to Becky's Diner. Ah, I was in Portland this weekend, and uh, I thought about making one of my breakfasts uh, Becky's. Becky's Diner not. fucking rules. Becky's is great. The thing, though, is you when I, do, when I go to breakfast, that's kind of it for the day. I'll have something there. I'll have a lot there. And then maybe at like four or five, I'll eat one more thing, and then I'm all done for the day. Yeah, that's uh, the way that you should be doing it. It's a great thing. So Becky's is great for like the last day. It's a nice send off. Yeah, I'll probably gift. do it on Sunday. Yeah, I was st I was th around all day. So if I'd kicked off uh, with Becky's, then I wouldn't have been able to do some other. Yeah, no, stuff. I I think that Becky's is is uh, is so heavy. And like you don't want to take it easy at Becky's because you probably have to wait forty five minutes and you're at Becky's, so you want to eat a ton of Becky's. Uh, I think every time that I've eaten there has been like the last thing that I've done before leaving Portland. You, you're gonna get a milkshake. I got a milkshake there. I might. <laughs> that I was might. that was a great I choice. Mean, if you're going to make it, and I got a strawberry milkshake to stay consistent with uh, this episode. If you're going to make it the big one thing you do, yeah. Fucking do that. Yeah. The only thing is, like, I don't think that I would do it on, like, a Friday or Saturday when staying there for the weekend because, like, I want to eat everywhere in Portland. Yeah. And I think Becky's would take me out. Uh, have you considered doing lobster rolls at other places than Eventide? No. I did that Eventide. this weekend. And 
I know that even Tide is probably going to be my favorite, but I think I'm. I began the process of venturing out and trying them at other places. Like I've never been to High Roller. Have you been to High Roller? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They supposedly have this amazing lobster roll. It, it's it's not my style. Like oh, I like is the, it I like cold. The, yeah, All like right, I like I the brown brown butter and and hot lobster. So I'm that's never why. gonna do a cold lobster roll. But people who people who do cold lobster rolls love High Roller. Like I like High Roller because they have. A ton. Uh, they have a ton of things on the menu, and like a lot of them incorporate lobster. Like the last time I was there, I got a lobby pop, which is essentially a lobster corn dog. Whoa! Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> Highly recommend. Another thing I tried recently. Have you had uh, Ollie? Uh, what's I, I think it's called Ollie Pop. Ollie Pop. Yeah, it's a. It's like the Spindrift version. It's not made by Spindrift, but it's like. What Spindrift is to seltzer, this is to soda. Mm. It has two grams of sugar, and it's like fucking soda. And you look at the ingredients, and it's like cinnamon <laughs> and uh, like vanilla extract and whatever. Why not? I'll tell you what, for a fake soda, first of all, it's four dollars a can. Holy shit! Yeah, so like you better like it. Yeah, I, I had a good time. Okay, they got it at uh, what's it called? They got it at. Um, Sweet green. Okay. I was there last week. Your salad blew away. Wind blew away my soda. <laughs> your salad. And I was, I'm uh, sorry, my salad. And I was so fucking happy. The wind tossed your salad. It flew away. And there was a woman sitting across from me. And I really want to make eye contact with her. I wish that she just was in her own world. But like very dramatically, a salad fucking flew <laughs> into the air and flew away. And I wanted her to look at me to be like, oh, no, whatever. Because I had it ready. I was going to say, look at God. <laughs> Famously, you, you don't like the sweet green salad, even though you go there and eat it all the time. How much do their salads go for? They got to be expensive, right? Uh, it's like, like 10. 16 bucks. Holy fuck. Because I get chicken on it, and they're like, okay. whoa, wait, you want... That's such an expensive salad for something that you don't even like and that you were happy that got blown in the, blown oh, away in the I wind. Oh, was, I was thrilled. That, I, I knew I was going to the dude, movies Dude, if my later. $16 salad got blown away, I'd be furious. Didn't care at all <laughs> other than to be happy that i didn't have to eat that salad That's anymore incredible and knowing like now all right so now it's sealed when i go to the movies in two hours i'm gonna get a 16 dollar popcorn i don't this know the best whether that life. signals what you hate more uh, like s salads salad or, or money. wasting money yeah, yeah like <laughs> oh no i mean i with me i just have to be in a routine of having salad even if i don't like it and i know that some people might now reach out saying, hey, you just probably haven't had the salad that you like, so don't waste your time. Like, find the kind that you like and then do that. I don't I like, like salad, that. but if I have to eat salad as, like, a replacement for a meal, like, I like salad on top of something that I'm eating or, like, as a side, but replacement salad unless it's like a steak tip salad no fucking thank you. Yes, yeah, I mean I've been getting back into uh, chicken Caesar wraps. Those are I mean, I know they're not good for you, yeah. but those are the best. Man, that's the only way that I'll like be happy about a quote unquote salad. Mm. I don't like Caesar dressing. Really? I don't like. Damn. Like I don't like most dressing. There's so much crunch in every bite, and a chicken Caesar wrap, it's the best. Yeah. If if, if barbecue sauce for some <laughs> reason would be socially acceptable, as, if they could just like change the color of barbecue sauce and make it look like salad dressing, then I'd be able to fit in and act like you weirdos. And You I'd could probably like get like some down. sort of like Santa Fe chicken wrap. It's got to be. Barbecue sauce has to be as, has to have the same nutritional value as half the salad dressings, right? I would imagine so, It's just yeah. like a shit. A lot of salad dressings are just like sugar and cream, but this yeah. is just like sugar and vinegar. Yeah. Uh, I I will say I one of my favorite things, you have famously... Uh, taking a break from drinking mm -hmm. for a little bit it's just so funny to me when you just like are out somewhere and you just send me a picture of a root beer and you're the happiest person that you've ever been <laughs> oh yeah i did i say on here i was uh, i was at a restaurant and under the non-alcoholic drinks it said root beer float no. so me and the other person there who weren't drinking were like Guess we're getting root beer floats. And when we sat down and everybody ordered their drinks, we ordered root beer floats. And it was fucking awesome. Except when the food came, everybody still had some of their drinks. 
I sucked down my root beer float in like two fucking seconds. And I'm not gonna get another root beer float because that is yeah, real. it's it's yeah. You that is you can't really like get another round for the boys with root beer floats. I guess you could, but that's dangerous. It's playing with fire. Man, yeah, I'm going to the movies again tomorrow. I'm. What are you seeing? Paddington Two. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm going as well. You, are you coming? Yeah. Good. You didn't. I don't. I can't remember if you answered. Well, you said like uh, you said you asked like. The initial invite was for me and my nephew, yeah. and then my nephew couldn't come. But like, you better believe I was going to that shit said, anyway. So, okay, but I, I thought that was implied. Like, uh, I, I, my was like, ah, uh, he can't come. I didn't say like we can't come or like he can't come, so I'm not coming. So you were like, feel free to come anyway, and I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, I'm, I was planning on it. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> this is at a non AMC. Do you? Ha- when was the last time you went to a non AMC? Um, it's a good question. It had to be like out of town or something yeah so this is a weird kind of exp- i had this experience uh at this thing uh a few weeks ago seeing the bad guys with my nephew one of the local theaters does a kids thing where they'll show kids movies kids go for free adults go for like two three four five dollars it's dirt cheap oh, i fucked up my neck and god damn it's been driving me fucking crazy. Uh, but anyway, it's a little disorienting when you go into a theater and it's not AMC because you really have your lay of the land oh, yeah. with everything. You know exactly which kind of snacks they're going to have. You know that you get to cut all those motherfuckers. You know where the ticket takers are. You yeah. know where the theaters are. You know like the seating arrangement with the numbers and the Last letters. time I was there, when I went to get a soda, they were like, would you like a regular soda? Or would you like a Scream 5 soda or whatever? And I was like, we never have stuff like this at AMC. This is nice. So now I have a Scream 5 cup. I'm I'm kind of glad, though, that AMC doesn't really, like, doesn't really dabble in the merch game much. Because I feel like I would spend so much money. And I've never done anything with the Scream 5 cup. And I'm never going to do anything. You tweeted it, it once. So, yeah. I was like, yo, check us out. It's a sick cup. This was only $40. <laughs> this is the fucking coolest. It was a it was a cool cup. Uh, yeah, I think you said like it was like the worst movie ever in that tweet that you posted. Yeah, I can't remember. What, I think it's actually Scream Six. That's the most recent one. Right? Yeah, Scream yeah, Six. Yeah, that was by far the worst Scream movie, and I think maybe one of the worst movies. Shout out, Dylan. That's crazy. Dermot Mulroney, though. I didn't like it very it's much. Not one of the, no, it's I'm not kidding. one of the worst movies. Yeah. It won't be one of the worst ten movies I see this year, even. Like that, the, there's always. What is the worst movie. movie you've seen this year? Uh, I, I let me see. Yeah, I want to check Letterboxd. I, I uh, don't see. Know. I just have movie twenty. Let's see. So I haven't kept up with it, but I wrote down. Uh, oh, you know what? Cocaine Bear might be the worst I've seen. Really? People love that movie. So, I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. But. Movies I wrote down that I've seen this year are Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, Cocaine Bear, Knock the Cabin, Plane, Scream Six, Missing, John Wick Four, Tetris, Air. Hypnotic, Across the Spider-Verse, The Machine, Blackberry, What Men Can't Jump, Bo is Afraid, Flamin' Hot, No Hard Feelings, The machi- uh, Machine, apparently I saw it twice, uh, Mission Impossible, Redhead, Redemption, Reckoning. Uh, yeah, I think of all of those movies, I probably put Cocaine Bear last. I'm, I'm going to say that you are going to take that back once I tell you what... My lowest rated movie of the year. Oh, hypnotic. Hypnotic. Yeah, hypnotic. Hypnotic was to... terrible. I think that that we don't. I don't think we really do a piece of shit of the year anymore. Yeah, that's. But if we brought it back, I think hypnotic would be the leader in the clubhouse. That movie Such sucked a good ass. Cast. Bill Fickner, how could you do it to me? Here's uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is a 2023 animated film from director Jeff Rowe and a team of co-writers including Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. The first CG animated film from Nickelodeon Animations, Mutant Mayhem follows the beloved quartet of turtles and a human teenager as they attempt to save the world from the devious mutant Superfly. As of this recording, it has a 96 on Rotten Tomatoes with an audience score of 92. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem has a runtime of one hour and 40 minutes. My biggest takeaway from this movie is it's probably the most I have seen a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing lean into teenage. Oh, this yeah, is that's true. extremely 
teenage. A lot of it's giving whatever and all of this how do you do fellow kids sort of stuff. Oh, I didn't I didn't take it not, away. Not I didn't any... take away like how do you do fellow kids? Like it didn't feel like it was cringy. It felt a little too much in that respect, and I feel that a lot of movies maybe choose against that sort of thing just to go super into what are the kids saying this minute because you want to to last and you want everybody to get it no matter when they see it. I mean, the thing I'll say about that is I'd rather them lean into that than have like it like sporadically drizzled throughout the movie like the, no this is all over it this it, is like they, they dump it all over the it. I, I would say like the mario movie does like a few like wink wink type things that that like tie it to today and kind of how do you do fellow kids and that stuff just feels more out of place this movie it was like part of the charm and part of like that world i i i really really liked this movie i felt like uh this comparison is probably going to be made a lot, but like Spider Verse ran so that this movie could run a little bit slower. Definitely, I mean, this isn't close to the the first Spider Verse movie. No, in but my I, well, I, and I wasn't crazy about the second one. This is probably somewhere in between. Like, I know that this is obviously, as I said, I think ninety six on Rotten Tomatoes, extremely well received. Uh, I think this is a good kids movie. I. Don't think it's as amazing, maybe, for people our age, even though the supporting cast is really good. Uh, Ice Cube loved him, loved Jackie Chan. Was crazy, but like Jackie Chan was my favorite part of the movie. But mostly, I think it's a kid's movie. And the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and uh, Io uh, Debris. And she was awesome. I liked her character. You didn't? No, I, I was I was gonna disagree with like I don't think this is a kids movie. I, I think it's equally split, like fifty fifty for kids and also for adults. Like I had a really good time in this movie, and like I yeah, like it's it's heavily based in like teenage world and stuff like that. But I enjoyed all, pretty much all of it. But even but its its story is so dumb. Like, I mean, it's it's it, so elementary. Have you ever seen uh, Spider Man and His Amazing Friends? No. It's a kids show, and it will be Spider Man and His Amazing Friends show up to something, and like Doc Ock will be like, "I'm going to spin your friends around and make them dizzy," and Spider Man and His Amazing Friends are like. You better not. We're going to stop you from doing that. And they stop him from doing that. And All Doc right. Ock's like, motherfucker, Spider-Man. I hate when you do this. <laughs> All right. That- yeah. All right. So I go what you're saying now where it's like it's very explicitly explained what's happening. Yeah. And I'll, I'll clarify. That's not a bad thing. It doesn't make it a bad movie. It probably limits how great it can be when it is all very, very, very obvious. But again, I, I, I think that this is more of a kid's movie. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I, I wouldn't call it as a knock against against like, the movie as an adult because, like, I know that it's being... It's, it's trying to be a movie for kids. And at the same time that it's being a movie for kids, it's also very entertaining for me as an adult. Yeah, I mean, I, so I liked all the adult... The, now we're just going to keep saying kids and adults, but, like... <laughs> And I hate having that argument, by the yeah. way. I hate being like, who is this movie made for? Like, no, I don't, you I, don't. That's your favorite thing to do. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Like, I don't love having that. Like, I, I, I want to have that conversation when it's very confusing. Yeah. Like, there are times where you, where you have to be like, all right, who was this made for? This one, like, I didn't, I wasn't asking that question at all because I know I understood that it was made for kids. It, like you said, it's pretty clear that it is. But I didn't have to ask that question or I didn't have to feel like I was like, oh, OK, well, I'm, I went to a kid's movie. I have to force myself to enjoy this. I, like I, I really, really it was easy to enjoy for me as an adult. I think if I'm like going with family, it bring in like a, a teen family member. I make sure I phrased not say it. I think if I go to this movie with a teenager, uh, but if, <laughs> if like I'm going with family, I'm doing it saying like, hey, I think you're going like I saw this movie was my favorite movie, but I think that you're going to really like it and it's going to be up your alley. I've recommended it to adult friends without Uh, kids. Okay, so if somebody asked me, I would say you don't need to see it in theaters, although I did see it in 3D. I like better or worse. I, I there wasn't a ton that was enhanced by the 3D aspect. My favorite parts of it, though, were Jackie Chan. I loved the scene where he tried to bring 
the real world to down <laughs> under the sewer. It was extremely Little Mermaid, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, he made me laugh. I liked that they didn't overdo it with Seth Rogen and John Cena as Bebop and Rocksteady. I really liked Rose Byrne's character. I couldn't keep track of all the other mutants, but Paul Rudd's character was good. He uh, was the only voice that I really recognized outside of Seth Rogen. Ah, uh, I knew that John and, and Cena, Ice Cube, obviously. I knew that John Cena was in it, and I heard this weird voice, and I was like, "That's probably pitched down John Cena," <laughs> which it was. Uh, there's a terrific. Now that here's where it's for adults. There's a terrific makeout scene between a rat and oh, yes. whatever slimy, crazy yes, thing. disgusting creature. Um, yeah, I mean, the outside of that disgusting, uh, that disgusting scene. I thought the visuals were really solid. Like the yeah, animation I loved was the animation. the animation was awesome, with the exception of there were a few points during like the big battle scene at the end where it was just like there was a lot going on, mm-hmm. and with that style of animation, which is in a way, like similar to Spider Verse, where it's like comic booky, yeah. Um, like it was, it was a little tough to to follow along, but other than that, like the the animation was great. Like the action sequences were very cool. I thought the world that they built was was really cool, and I think the like the biggest strength for me was this movie actually felt like it had soul to it. Like it had uh, a it had like a, a pulse, and it was cool and. I feel like a lot of these like reboots of these beloved franchises have been sanitized down and kind of been a little bit clean and lifeless in a way. And this movie wasn't super afraid to take some chances. I don't know how much soul I found from like I found myself rooting for the high school character, but I mean, ultimately you knew where it was all heading. It was going to be some showdown with Superfly. Although, this movie is not paced very well. It takes... For, for a movie that yeah, is like pretty paint-by-numbers, it takes forever for you to know that, like, okay, Superfly is trying to... Like, Superfly wants to eliminate the humans. 50 minutes in before you get to that point. Yeah, but I, I, I didn't find that, like, I was like, all right, get to this, this oh, point. Oh, I did, yeah. Really? I didn't at I all. Did, I yeah. thought this movie moved pretty briskly. Uh, I thought that it it was over kind of in a flash. Uh, the, only, the only knock there would be, like, I felt like the final battle was over a bit too not too quickly but i think that it was a bit unsatisfying yeah a bit unsatisfying um in the way that it ended there's a great there are a lot of good lines in this movie my favorite line was uh when they i won't give it away because i don't want to totally spoil the movie but uh they attempt to take down ice cube's superfly character uh, after uh he has maybe turned into something even more imposing and they struggle to do that and ice cube has a line about a horse that is very, very good. This movie is oddly mean to Leonardo. I didn't like that. Uh, they meet Io Idibri's character by uh, throwing a ninja star at her and hitting her in the head. There's just a couple of little things like that where I'm like, ah, now I am asking who this movie's for. I don't know. The the Leonardo thing I thought was, I didn't, I mean, yeah, they boarded on bullies. They on razzed bullying. him a little bit, but it's a it's a brothers dynamic. Like I, I felt like that was just well, a kind Leonardo of part of the charm. Never did t- uh, anything to deserve it. They were super mean to. Leonardo. Yeah, but he was like, "I'm the leader," and when you do that with your four brothers, they're probably going to give you some shit. I don't. I mean, yeah, I I, I don't think I love this as much as other people. Uh, I really liked it. There is a psychotic electronic version of What's Up by Four Non Blondes in this song. That's oh, one yes. of my favorite. Yes, there is. Of it. Uh, what are some of your positives? Uh, animation was great. I thought the action sequences were very cool. Uh, and I felt like this had soul. Uh, positives for me, I think you covered. Like, it looked great. And I liked really all the adults, especially Jackie Chan. Uh, the negatives, I think that it maybe did force some teen speak in there uh it was a little wonky with its pacing uh where are you giving it on letterbox i am giving it a, i initially gave it a 4.5 out of five wow i have since downgraded it to a four out of five 
I gave it. Uh, I was gonna give it a three and a half out of five, but like, given how many things I do like about it, it doesn't I bump it up sound to a like four. a three and a half out of five. Really? Yeah, no, I, like, I would have guessed it a four out of five. That's crazy. I would have thought you know, the way that you're talking about it, I thought at least three, like max three out of five. All right. I this is a confusing kind of review. You around here, Anybody but... who's listening to this is probably like, who likes this movie? Pete doesn't like it. I loved it. Uh, that's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Something that happened uh, whilst in Maine this weekend, I was driving my parents' car, and or one of my parents' cars, and they famously have Sirius XM. Every time I'm in one of those things, I fire up either the Grateful Dead channel or... The Beatles channel, it's always a good time. But I like to kind of stretch out a little and try some stuff that I don't listen to. So for a drive to Portland, I tossed on the Bruce Springsteen channel. And now I think I'm going to go see Bruce Springsteen. Never seen him before. That's insane to me. Have yeah. always liked and respected him. Like but you, the music guy, and like a former sports reporter... Yeah. I never saw Bruce Springsteen. It's like those are like the two requirements for both of those uh, hobbies or professions. It's just because I've I, seen Bruce I Springsteen. Haven't like, I haven't been so crazy and so passionate about him the way that a lot of people are. Yeah, but, so nobody, I, but the people won't shut the fuck up about like the shows and like you got to see them. Like I, I would have thought that you would have just gone out of just pure like intrigue because that's why i went to go see him so now i view it correctly which is like this is an artist that you like a lot so go see them mm -hmm. but for a while i was just more scared off of like everybody being like hey you see uh i went last night you played badlands Love when he plays Badlands. I've seen him play Badlands a hundred times. I hope he doesn't play Dance in the Dark. That shit's for posers. I really want him to sing uh, Badlands or like whatever. And it's just everybody talking about Badlands all day. And it just, it's like the, the way I won't go, I not I won't go, but like the reason I didn't even consider going to Era's tour. I'm like, this is just for a different species of, <laughs> of thing than me yeah but i don't think that that's the case with bruce springsteen i think everybody just kind of like minds their own fucking business it sort of reminds me of like the of like the dead like if you don't want to if you don't want to like involve yourself in those conversations you don't have to oh no i'm gonna go and <laughs> yeah, involve I, myself in those i know you are i'm like, gonna go and be like hey you see set list from last night? You played Badlands. So, like, really, let's diagnose it. The reason why you haven't gone to see I Bruce Springsteen. I haven't turned into one of those people yet, but you, now I'm turning into one You of them. didn't want to go and then not participate in the conversations around the show. Yeah, if people are going to be insufferable about a music thing, I, I want to be at the front the, of the line. I should be, get to be the person. That's, and, oh, and truly, this is, sounds so stupid and up my own ass, but I'm like, if a bunch of people are gushing about why a music thing is so great, like, I should be in on that conversation. Yeah, like, and, I gotta and, and get if it. I don't feel like, oh my god, he fucking played uh, the the river. Oh, can you believe the river? The river is the most important thing that's ever been made. And I'm like, personally, I don't think the river is the most important thing that's ever been made. But I'll tell you what, when I was on this drive, I'm like, ooh, because I, I I only love one of his albums, but that's just because. I think I just never really like got Beatlesy with him where I was like I'm listening beginning to end to all of them but right now I'm listening to his like late 70s through mid 80s stretch where he would just churn out fucking awesome albums Darkness on the Edge of Town that's the only Bruce Springsteen album I own on vinyl and that's the only one that I've always been like yeah I fucking love that album but shit man like the river, Nebraska. I've been tossing it on when I rollerblade. I'm gonna go. You're gonna come. I'm gonna come. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I've seen him before. I think and I'm just had a gonna, great time. I don't know how many tickets to get. I, I, if you get four, you'll have no problem. So selling that's the thing. The I think two, I'm gonna or not selling, but buy, like giving them away. Buy four. Ask questions later. I want them to be good seats. I want like in a month when I'm even more into Bruce Springsteen because. We know me. We know how these things go. I'm only going to... Like, I, I just finished the complete rewatch of 24. When I started rewatching 24, of course, I'm going to run that fucking shit into the ground. So in a month or two, I'm going to be fucking talking about 
uh, like deep cuts on 2002 Bruce Springsteen records, so I better have fucking seen him by the time he, you know what. I really hope that you get somebody else to bring to the show because I don't want you talking to me about the Bruce Springsteen deep cuts. I don't care. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> what do you think he's playing next? You think he's playing Badlands? <laughs> that will be you. I, uh, if you're a Bruce Springsteen fan, where is he playing by the way? Uh, Gillette Stadium. Okay, great. If you're a Bruce Springsteen fan. Let me know if I'm, if Badlands is a terrible example to be using. Badlands, you probably lump in with like Born in the USA and Dancing in the Dark as being too popular, perhaps. But I but I don't know. Maybe Bruce Springsteen fans are a little more. Sound inclusive. off in the comments below. Sound off in the comments. Did you know is that Badlands by Bruce Springsteen a hit? <laughs> Did you know that people can leave comments on like a Spotify podcast episode? I don't like I, that a bit. I, I went back and I looked. To, you'll love it when you when I tell you that all the comments have been very positive. Good. People have just been like, "Ooh, good episode, guys." Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like that. I feel like Spotify is just a very friendly community where, like, remember remember back in the day when there was like the Apple like, they. They still exist, but the Apple reviews and yeah. stuff, we get like eight really nice ones and then like two really nasty ones. Yeah. And uh, I feel like that doesn't happen on Spotify. It's just like a better community. I think that people don't leave reviews anymore unless they're going to be Assholes. really nice. Oh. Yeah, no, like on Spotify. Oh, okay. Like I'm not going to think to leave a review unless I don't think I've actually ever reviewed anything on Spotify. I am, though, by the way, not to brag, uh, we're. Instagram is an extremely generally positive place, I think. Apologies to anybody who hasn't had the best time on there. But relative to Twitter, of course, it's uh, very positive. X. And uh, I'm sorry, X. Uh, but we've been able to find a way to churn out some content that is uh, yielding some angry and uh, disparaging comments on Instagram. So I that's called great. Matt Gaiman this week. And I, Matt th Gaiman. I thought that that was pretty funny. That's a that, that was a good one. Yeah, there is a lot of uh, the that that uh, that men reviewing Barbie thing. It's uh, it's doing the trick on there. It did exactly what we wanted it to do, and I yeah. was very happy about it. So follow on all of our socials or whatever, and uh, what else? patreoncom slash listen to brunch. Uh, we uh, show announcement next week. We're going to be back uh, with another episode.